A safe self-hosted search deployable in minutes? That's what you get with CRXNG and today we're going to take a look at it. Now, if you want to get right into it, just jump to the installation section. It's as easy as installing a Docker container. This really isn't rocket science. And by the way, before you jump into the comments and tell me it's how to pronounce CRXNG, I don't know either. I actually asked ChatGPT and got a whole bunch of different options. So I will continue saying Seer XNG. I might say Seer if I get bored. Before we get into that, why don't we step back and talk about what Seer XNG is. So basically, it's a meta search engine that distributes queries over many other search engines, doing so in a way that profiles are not generated about you and your search habits, so you're much less trackable. So when you're self-hosting Seer, you aren't self-hosting a search index, but rather you're self-hosting the engine that queries other search services and ensures your requests are anonymized. Now, there are public SEER services you can use, but by self-hosting, you can be absolutely sure about what is happening. And of course, it's open source, so if you want to get in to see exactly what is running in your meta search engine, you can do exactly that. So, so today, we're going to take a look at how to install it, which is really very simple, what the experience looks like, and how to route the backend search queries over a VPN using a unified dream machine. Now the Docker container solution is straightforward. You can see it right here. But if you want to route the queries over a VPN, that may impact your container setup. So you need to think about that, that up front. You could use something like Gluten to accomplish this, but that will require extra configuration that I'm not going to go into here. And I believe there's some other content creators that have covered that reasonably well. In my case, I decided to do the VPN routing in my Unify Dream Machine. And because Unify does the routing at an IP level or a network level, I decided to run Seer on its own virtual machine to keep things simple. Arguably, this is overkill, just running one virtual machine for one Docker container, but it worked fine in my environment and I had some extra resources to uh, throw away. And it was super easy to configure. But all right, let's just get this started and installed so you can see what it looks like. All right, so here I have a clean install of Ubuntu Server LTS uh, 24, I believe. And so it should have Docker installed, which it does. So what we're going to do is just run the Docker command that was on the SEER website. And you can see it right here, but we're gonna make a couple changes first. So first thing, we're just gonna make a directory which will store some state and I will just call it SEER. Now you need to think about what port you're gonna run it on. Now, since I am running a dedicated virtual machine to this, I'm going to be running it on port 80. And so what we're gonna do is just run the Docker command as follows. We're gonna do sudo, sudo docker run. Now on the website, it says to do dash dash rm. I'm gonna do slight, something slightly different to make sure it restarts. I'm gonna do restart always. Now here's where you specify your ports and you can see I'm going to go with port 80 on this, but if you're running this on a machine with other ports in use, you may want to go with a different port like 8080. One thing I have found is when you start to use Seer inside your web browser and configure a search engine, sometimes I found like the port parameters don't always stick in, for example, like a Firefox search engine configuration. I particularly found this with Brave where I've set up Seer as a search engine I put in the port number and it just disregards it. I don't know why. So I just run it on port 80 just to keep things simple. Now here's where we're going to set up some of the volumes that go to the container. You can make the instance name whatever you want. And there you go. There is the name of the container. So let's run this and see what happens. All right, it should be that simple. Now we should just be able to open up a web browser and go to the IP address of this virtual machine and see it running. And so we are at 192.168.122.49. And there we go. It's that simple to get it up and running. And now you have your own meta search engine, which behind the scenes is going to be querying a whole bunch of other search engines and showing you the results. So here's what we'll do. Let me just, uh, we'll search for something like, um, what is interesting right now? Well, I could search for Taros, but I'm not gonna do that. How about the AMD 9950X 3D processor? This seems to be popular. And here you go. Very, very simple result set. I mean, no ads, no uh, 
embedded videos or anything else, just straightforward text. I love it. And of course you can go over, it has, you know, similar to other major search engines, all the different tabs you would expect and you can sift through this and it's great. Now, of course you can go into the preferences and this is where you can dig in and really customize it to be what you want. You can select if you want to default it to a language. I did have uh, some trouble where it kept thinking I was in the UK and would default my language to Great Britain. So I would come, come in here and set it. You can set up safe search. You can have it autocomplete. And then under, let's see, obviously you can change the user interface. They have different themes of light, dark, etc. Everything you would expect. You can, there are more privacy settings. And then here's where you can go in and configure the search engines you wanted to use. And what's in front of us is the default set of search engines which are enabled. So you can see for web searching, by default, it's going to use Brave, DuckDuckGo, and Google. It's not going to use Bing. And of course, you can go in and decide which ones you want to use for yourself. And it has different settings for images, videos, news, etc. So you can really make this exactly what you want out of it. And you can set up special queries like these kind of bang queries, such as basic math and things like that. Now, what I'm going to do just for an example is I'll do a couple of searches. I'm going to open up, uh, I'll open up Google Chrome since I'm, what I'm doing is I'm running this in Brave right now and just show you some side by side. So we'll run a query. Let's pull up the, um, the X3D query again. So that's what it looks like here, but we'll do a private window. And what I'm gonna do is I'll go to Google and look at the same result. And here you can see the difference, right? There is the results from SEER, and here's the Google result where you get a ton of sponsored information right up front, taking up like half the page. And then on this side is all kinds of shopping information. And yeah, admittedly, the first result is the same, which is the AMD site, but a whole bunch of very different experience, we'll say. You can decide if it's good or not. But so there's the Google one. And so why don't we try something? We'll try uh, something uh, in the news. So tariffs are common um, in, the, in the news right now. Let's see if I spelled that right. I spelled it wrong. All right, so that's what it looks like with Sear. Again, very straightforward interface. Go over to Google. And then for the news about tariffs, you know, admittedly, there's nothing sponsored here, which is fine, but you get the kind of news injected right up front. So here you go, quick example of the differences you get between the two. And one other thing that's interesting to look at is if you go to the bottom of the page, you can click on this link, Engine Stats. Okay, so you can see some stats. So for that query, you can see how it called Brave, DuckDuckGo, and Google, and you can get a sense of how it's spreading your queries across these different actual search engines. So that, that's kind of fun to play with. Now, the next thing to think about when you set this up is how do you want to route the backend queries? So right, this is running on a virtual machine, which we saw in a container on a virtual machine, but the queries themselves are still going out over my standard internet connection. If you want to be really, I guess, secure, or if you're privacy paranoid about it, you may want to route those queries over a VPN. Now, like I said before, there are tools you can do this uh, with the Docker container and you can use Gluten to do it. I'm not gonna go through that setup right now. What I'm gonna do is configure this on my unified dream, mach dream machine. So basically this Docker container and this virtual machine will have no idea the queries are being routed over a virtual machine. That's <laughs> over a VPN. Um, but let me show you how to do that real quick. All right, so I have logged in to my dream machine and you're going to go, now I assume you're gonna have a VPN connection set up. I'm not gonna go through that right now. But if you go to your settings and you go to routing and then you go to policy-based routes, you can see right here, um, these are the VPN routes I have set up and I actually have this already running for another uh, instance of SEER I have. But for this demonstration, we'll just create a new entry. And I'm gonna say SEER test. And the source, what we're gonna do is, again, you can choose the source as an entire network, a specific IP address, et cetera. So you could consider putting your SEER virtual machine on its own network and then routing all traffic from that network over the VPN. And then you're gonna to need to select your device. Now, you may need to go to the full client list and look at the IP address of your device because it'll be in here under some strange name. But I happen to know this is it and I'll just click save. And then what you can do is you can say the destination, right? And you can say, hey, for any destination, which is what I want in this case, we're gonna route it over NordVPN. 
And then you can choose kill switch, which basically will stop all internet connections. If the VPN goes down, that's your choice. I'll say no, and then you can click save, and there you go. And what you will have is when you go back here to Sear, everything will, will look the same. You'll still access it through the IP address that you set up, just that all the backend traffic coming out of this thing, when it gets to the unified dream machine, will then be routed over your VPN. And what I found is it's a little bit slower, but you know, it does give you, you know, that extra layer of privacy. So this was quick and simple. You know, like I said, uh, self-hosting a uh, meta search engine. If you're really uh, interested in kind of, you know, your privacy and protecting yourself against search engines, developing profiles on you, et cetera, this is an extra step you can take. And it is, as you saw, super, super easy to self-host. All you do is just start a Docker container and let it go. So I think it's worth trying out, see if it works for you. Let me know if you have any questions down below and we'll see you next time.